here in Lancaster a lot. So uh, put your hands together because here comes Sarah Porter. <laughs> Supporting some local comedy. Now, since it's it's gearing up for the election, are we ready? Are we all registered to vote? So I finally got registered to vote. And when you register to vote, they want you to pick a political party. And since it's South Carolina, we only have like two options. One is Republican, the other is faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, I got some questions for you. What came first, the sweatpants or the low self-esteem? <laughs> and are cougars a group of sexually active old ladies, or are they just really, really, really late bloomers? <laughs> when people ask you, hey, why are you wearing a dress today? What they're really saying is, hey, you don't look ugly today. <laughs> I had a uh, roommate in college, and she got a scholarship to play softball. But she got injured and lost her scholarship. It was really sad. Because, you know, not enough people know that before you play a game of softball, always make out to stretch your tongue. <laughs> Always stretch out that tongue. <laughs> you know, if you have a tattoo on your face, you're telling the world that you're a criminal. And it doesn't matter if you get released, because unlike your record, your face can't get expunged. <laughs> I was uh, out the other day, and I saw Alexis and it had a bumper sticker on it, and the bumper sticker said, I'd rather be cycling. And I thought, I like, wow, how rich do you have to be that not riding a bicycle is a choice? <laughs> Man, every time I get on my bike, I think, damn, I'd rather be in a Lexus. <laughs> no, I'm broke. Is anybody else here broke? <laughs> it's okay. You know, I actually, I grew up poor. And I grew up poor, Irish, Catholic, and my mother used to tell us a saying to help us get by. And she would say, Sarah, now, God will never give you more than you can handle. And I'm like, oh, okay, Mom, so God thinks I can't handle a full-time job with benefits. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, being broke kind of sucks. You know, like, going to the grocery store is really hard. Because I don't want to spend a $5 on a loaf of bread and then waste half of it. Because, you know, I have to cook for one person. So I went to the grocery store the other day, and I was going through the freezer aisle, and I saw something that said, meals for one. And what it included was a frozen entree and a free can of cat food. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know what's more sad, the fact that I bought it or I... Ate the cat food for dessert. <laughs> Hungry sometimes. Now, I, I hate when you are checking out at a store and the person in front of you asks the cashier, Now, do you accept American Express? I just want to scream. I want to be like, Yes, it's a fucking store. They will take your money. It's like the next time I hook up with a guy, I'm going to be like, Hey, you're going to sleep with me? He's going to ask, You're a girl, right? But, well, I have to ask, because I'm not accepted everywhere. <laughs> you know, um, being sexually active for me is kind of like getting an oil change. You know, it only happens every three to four months. It's just routine, and most of the time my dad tells me when I'm overdue. <laughs> I went to work, and... I had a bruise on my arm. My coworker was like, Sarah, you might want to put a sweater on. People here are going to think you're a battered wife. And I was like, oh, girl, I'm not going to put a sweater on this. Because when I go out in public, I want people to know there's a man at home that cares about what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, 
eating an entire bag of those Dove chocolates the other night. <laughs> the ones with like the inspirational quotes in them. <laughs> those inspirational quotes can get like a little too personal. I was eating one chocolate and on the foil it said, reach the limits of your credit card. <laughs> no, Dove chocolate, don't tell me to do that. The next one I ate, it said, go on girl, eat your feelings. <laughs> Um, a friend of mine, she got flowers delivered to her at work from her boyfriend. And I was like, Jessica, it's not your birthday and you're not married. Why would he send you flowers? And she said, oh, my boyfriend just sent me flowers, you know, just because. I was like, oh, yeah, me too. The last time I got flowers delivered to me from a guy, it was also just because. I let him do me in the butt. <laughs> no, um, since it's an election year, you know, there's been a lot of talk about female health and female contraception. So I decided I should probably do some research for my own. And I was reading about the Plan Bill, the Plan B pill. And it said that, you know, if you take Plan B, it has an 80% effective rate of stopping unwanted pregnancy when taken orally. I was like, 8%? That's kind of scary. You know, I want to be 100% safe. You know, I'm 100% safe at stopping unwanted pregnancy when I take it orally. <laughs> Think. <laughs> Think it. <laughs> Together. <laughs> no, one time I actually had a pregnancy scare. It was so scary and embarrassing. And I was going to have to call Jim and tell him that he might be a father. So when I called the number that he left for me, it connected me to Jim Me Johns. <laughs> and I said, hey, well, since I'm here, can I get a bootlegger? Because it looks like I'm eating for two. <sighs> you guys don't get it. <laughs> you guys in the audience, you don't understand what us women go through with these pregnancy scares, you know? The only way I can describe it, that the men here can understand, it's like when you go to turn on your Xbox, and you just get that red circle of death, and you think, damn, I don't have $500 to fix this. <laughs> I was at work and I worked customer service and I had a customer come up to me and she said, oh, so when are you due? I was like, whoa, you know, to any non-pregnant person, that might be the most offensive thing you could ever ask. But I was at work, so I just gathered myself and I said, ma'am, really? You think so? I've just been trying for years and years and years to find a guy who would actually blow a load in me. <laughs> Thank you. I had a, a girlfriend tell me about this recipe for this thing called engagement chicken. Apparently what it is, if you prepare chicken in this way and serve it to your boyfriend, he's supposed to promote, propose marriage to you. It's like a superstition thing. And I was like, oh my god, it's supposed to be chicken. Because I've been serving one night stand Tostino's pizzas. <laughs> it doesn't get me anywhere. It's okay, now that I'm, I'm getting older and I've been single for a while, I've come to you know, be okay with it. I'm like, you know, it's fine. Some people are meant to get married and some other people like me were just supposed to be single. And that's fine, you know. Because my mom used to tell me this old saying, she would say, Sarah, now, don't buy the cow when you can just get that cow a drink and then finger bang him on the dance floor. <laughs> That's me. My name's Sarah. Thank you guys very much.